All right, what's going on, guys? Stock Junk here today, up about five hundred four dollars. Had quite a bit of a uh, interesting morning. I was up roughly seven hundred fifty bucks, and I lost it all. Was down one hundred eighty, and now back up to five hundred four. So let's just go over those trades, show you what I was trading, and maybe you can learn something from it. So uh, my first trade of the day was OMEX, which we're looking at right here. So OMEX, what I saw out of the gate was it was gapping up a little bit, it had some news. So as it was spiking up, here's the open right here. As it was spiking up, I'm just looking for a quick scalp. It's the first trade of the day. Um, so it was coming up near $4. I just wanted to scalp the $4 move. If you know anything about stocks is they like to move at whole dollars and half dollars. So at the 50 cent mark and at the whole dollar mark. Here's a whole dollar mark, $4. This is where some people set their shorts, uh, their short stop loss. So it might spike there, and that's kind of what it did here. So I got it in at 395, at the with the anticipation that four dollars would break. I saw the volume coming in. Sure enough, four dollars broke, and I sold at 402, basically 403, and basically made you know seven cents, 2,000 shares, 140 dollars to start the day. So DVAX, this was my second trade of the day. DVAX was the bane of my existence on Friday, and I actually didn't do a video. I planned on doing one. I was up and down all day long. It was just a bad trading day. It was actually my first red trading day in over two weeks. And I have a philosophy of trading that if I ever have a pretty bad red day, I don't focus on it. I don't think about it. I don't write it down. I don't write down how much I lost. I just don't focus on it and get it out of my brain so I could focus on the next day. And unfortunately, we had a three-day weekend, which sucked terribly. So I kind of was thinking about it a little bit. But it's a heck of a lot easier to forget about it when you get back to trading and you have a green day right, right off the bat, like I have today. So today's wins haven't made up for last week or last Friday's loss, but it's just getting the bad taste out of my mouth. Anyway, DVAX owned me on Friday. I played it on some news that turned out to just not really work out in my favor and I lost a lot of money on it. But then over the weekend some positive news came out and as you can see right now it's up over $2.79. So knowing that a lot of people were shorting this stock I wanted to try to ride the momentum of it coming back up. See here, down here, down here on the daily, you can see when the news came out, they had an adcom meeting cancellation. Boom, it went from $16 all the way down to $10.14 in one day. So on this day, here on Tuesday, we had a gap up, which is nice. And you're going to have some shorts covering. You're going to have um, people playing this news now. So that's what I did. Um, I was... I was watching DVAX, let's, let's see here on the five minute chart. So DVAX at 9.33, it was kind of doing one of these here in pre-market, then it opened up, dipped down slightly, then as it was coming back up on this curl here, and I was watching probably the one minute chart at this time, looking for it to break this level. See how it made this little peak here and a little peak here? I'm looking for it to break that level. So as the volume's starting to come in, I'm anticipating the break of that. And that level is also right around, you guessed it, the half dollar mark, 1350. So I go long at 1337. As I see volume coming in, I see it curling up here. I play the candle over candle on the one minute and I get in. I go 1337, 2000 shares. Sure enough, it popped up. Went over the half dollar and I just sold at 13.55. Well, guess what it did afterwards? Boom, all the way to 14.43. But you know what? I'm happy. I got my, what is that? Almost 20 cents on 2,000 shares. Yes, please. So yeah, I missed this huge move, but I didn't care. I was just, I'm scalping it. I'm just grabbing my 5 cents, 20 cents here and there. 2,000 shares, it all adds up. SORL was my third trade of the day. It is a low float stock. Each trade is showing it only has 19 million shares on the float, which means it can move pretty fast, either up or down. It can, it can move both ways fast. 
So this was gapping up. This was moving up. As you can see, it spiked from 255 all the way to base, almost $3. And it was hitting my scanner. So as I saw that, we were inside this candle here. I just jumped in. I was up on the day, so I took a little bit of a risk. It's not necessarily any kind of setup I was playing. I was just trying to play the momentum. So I got in at 276 in this one minute candle right here. Uh, and I exited at 289. So 13, 14 cents, 2000 shares, rinse and repeat. So I'm doing nice on the day so far. Three for three in my opening trades, doing well. BXC, fourth trade of the day. All right, another one that was low float stock e trade showing 9 million shares in the float. So this one can really move. And as you can see on the five minute chart, we go from $9 to 960 in five minutes. Then we go from 965 down to 890. So these are the these are the kind of moves you can expect in low float stocks. I mean, you can it's make or break kind of stuff. You just have to learn how to play these. So this was hitting the scanners and around the, the whole dollar mark is what I was watching it. So 938 is when I took the trade. Here's the one minute chart, it's running up, running up. I see the whole dollar, I see it hitting the scanners. I know other people, it's gonna hit their scanners. So I'm up on the day, it's a little bit more of a risky play because there was no news on this. There was no reason for it to be popping up. The daily chart, nothing to write home about. But I know that the half dollar is there, the 950 mark, and I know that you know a lot of people play that as well. So I hop in as it breaks um, 950, and as it breaks 950, I end up selling at 959 and change, basically 960, so 10 cents. SGMO is my next trade. I was watching the one minute chart at this point. It was hitting the scanners as just volume coming into it, going to the upside. I saw the spike here, come back down, and I was playing candle over candle in the one minute. So I entered as soon as this broke, which actually was the break of 450 again. So I got a little bit of a pop. It went up to 452, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I wanted to keep going, break high a day. So as it came back down, I exited and uh, I exited at 4.47 for a loss of three cents, sixty dollars on the day. On the day there, loss of sixty bucks. Not my typical play. I usually like to play five minute candle over candles, but sometimes if a stock is moving and I think it's going to move more, I'll watch the one minute chart because it's a faster uh, entry. EOG. So this is when the wheels started to fall off on the day. EOG is up big time today on news, up six bucks currently on news. So this is where chat rooms sometimes get it wrong too. I'm in two chat rooms currently and we were looking at this saying, okay, it's probably overextended. There needs to probably be a pullback. Uh, it's up, 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 up all morning long. Eventually there's got to be profit takers come in, correct? I mean, you'd think so. So I'm watching the five minute chart. The person in the chat room points it out. I like what he's thinking. Usually when you get your first candle under candle is a good time to go short. So I'm watching this candle. We get a red candle. It closes red. And I go short as it breaks the previous candle's low. And I actually ended up shorting EOG at 93.50. Thinking same thing with half dollars here. You wanted to break that half dollar. Well, sure enough, it broke that half dollar. And I was actually fine. I was actually positive. But it, it popped right back up. And it kept popping right back up. That's not a good sign. When you are sh shorting or going long a stock and it breaks that half dollar mark, you want to see that move continue the way you're thinking. So in this case, it's breaking 93.50. I wanted to continue to go down. I want. I don't want to see people buying or shorts covering immediately. Well, sure enough. So I was up $100, up $200, and then I was down 50. And then sure enough. The next candle opens up and it just crushes us. Um, but I was getting out as it was moving back up. I actually covered at 93.65 for a loss of $300 there. The candle under candle was a pretty good setup, but it just didn't pan out and it was just too strong of a move. Again, this is a more risky play. I'm trying to short a stock as against the trend of the day. That's usually more risky of a play. If you try to play the opposite direction of the current day's trend, so today's current day's trend is up, 
and I'm trying to short that, that's a risky play, and I normally wouldn't do that, but I was up on the day, so I felt comfortable trying it out. Definitely more risky play. And I got burned on it. And as you can see, it is, it is just a straight monster today. Look at that. Up to 95 now. Are you kidding me? So when a stock just doesn't act how you think it's going to and how you've planned it out, just don't hold on to it. Just let it go. Just let it go. I mean, if I was still short this stock, I'd be down $2 on it. No thank you. That's That would have been four grand. I'd much rather be down $300 than $4,000. Didn't act how I thought it was. So cut it loose, move on. So DVAX, I got back to this again at 10.05. Here you can see we had some a huge spike and then kind of selling off here as profit taker stepped in. And then we had this candle, which was very, very interesting to me. It was like, okay, this is this is nice. You had a nice run up from up here, a little selling off, and now I'm looking for my favorite favorite pattern is the five minute candle over candle, right? Sure enough, we got that. Boom, huge spike as this candle broke. 1375 all the way to 1408. Great move. Then another pullback happened. All right, so I want to play that again. I want to play this candle over candle. So we have the pullback on this candle, went all the way down to 1366, and then came up. So I'm watching as this candle opened up. As this breaks, what was this? 1397. So as this candle's breaking, and again, we're near the $14 mark again, the whole dollar mark. I love playing that those areas. That's usually when people will come in with volume. So pull back as this candle breaks, candle over candle. I go long. I get actually long at $13.97. It cracks $14. It starts to sputter. I notice, I see that it's sputtering. I get out at $14.02, basically $14.03. Grab my five cents, move on $100. And as you can see, the move wasn't strong and ended up selling off even more all the way down to 1326. So here is NAV. This one wrecked my life today. This is where I actually was up like 700 bucks at this time and ended up going negative 180 because of this one trade right here. So NAV, another super strong mover out of the gates. Look at this huge spike from 1950 basically all the way to 2342 in 10 minutes huge move so i'm watching and seeing that if the momentum has broken down and he had this huge spike came down spiked up again and we had this kind of bearish candle with this huge spike and coming right back down and this started to sell off which is what i was watching and i decided to go short i went short at 10 11 um, 10 11 a.m. and I went short at $22 and 21 cents well I was playing this break uh, of this candle and it just beat me up it started to sp I played the candle under candle it beat me up it spiked back up I was I got stopped out of it I thought I would, my I didn't want to stick around and watch this thing just shoot up again again I'm playing against the trend of the day the trend is obviously bullish and i'm trying to go short so it's a dangerous play anyway so as this green candle came up and it just blew past me i stopped out 22.65 for basically a 45 cent loss made me go red on the day all my profits gone blah 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 but you know what guess what happened boom it just decided to sell off after that so the idea was right the timing was wrong but, you know, hindsight's 2020. It could have been just like my other short that just absolutely exploded, EOG. It could have been like EOG. EOG, the other strong mover of the day, sold off a little bit, but then just decided to go up. So I can't feel bad that I didn't make money on NAV. I just got to be happy that I stuck to my plan and moved on. Didn't do what I thought I was going to do. Stuck to my plan and moved on. All right, so Ren gapped up this morning. It was up quite a bit at the open. It's, and I had a feeling it would sell off. You can be, look at the daily, though. I mean, it just had a crazy awesome day 
Friday, and I was making some awesome calls on this. And just I really had the pulse of the stock. If you follow me on stock twits, uh, you would have seen my calls. It was just I was nailing them hand and fist. So huge day on Friday, which led to it gapping up pre-market today. I had a feeling it was going to sell off, and it sure did, sure enough did. It opened up, boom, huge sell off. You go from 23.87 ish all the way down to 21.50 in that area. So sell, 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 sell. We had a little candle over candle here, but look at these, you know, tails on these things, these tops on these things. It just it's bearish. So it just kept going, going, going. Then we had another opportunity here to see if this was the base. And this is kind of what I was interested in playing. And sure enough, that's what I ended up doing. I got in at 10.25 at $22.04. So I was thinking that we were going to break the previous candles high. And it actually didn't happen right away. Um, it started dump dumping down again, but it eventually did crack it on the next candle. And when it did, look at that. The volume came in, popped back up. I was hoping that this next candle would, again, crack the previous candle's high. It didn't right away. I wanted to take my profits. I was red on the day. I needed to get green again. This this helped me get green again. I ended up selling at 22.26 for 18 cents. No, for 22 cents profit on 2,000 shares. And that helped me get green again so we have this nice move that i play this is the five minute chart here's the sell-off and then we saw it coming back up so i wanted to play the break of this right here i was watching that that candle closed this one opened up so as the high which was 2248 broke is when i was going to go long i knew 2250 again that's a half dollar mark a lot of people probably put their stops there so I got in at $22.44, $22.44, and the anticipation the volume was coming in. It was moving up $22.44, and I was playing the anticipation of the $22.50 crack. It did break it. It wasn't a clean break. It popped up quickly, and then came right back down. So I exited inside this candle at $22.50 for basically $0.06, cents, $120. So I played DVAX again. This was just looking for a $14 break. Uh, at 10.58 a.m., I got in. I saw the, the volume come back in. We had a, a pop, then a little sell-off. This is the one-minute chart here. And then a pop again. So I got in at the, at the candle over candle here on the one-minute chart. So I got in at 13.89. It popped up to 13.97. Uh, the momentum just wasn't there to carry it over 14, so I sold really quick for at 13.95, basically six cents there, 2,000 shares, 120 dollars. So Ren was moving up. I was watching it. It gave me a little bit of a head fake here, but I was playing the candle over candle uh, as it broke um, 11, as it broke 22.76, the high of this current five-minute candle right here. As it broke down, I went long, so I went long at 22.79, 22.80, somewhere in there. So it popped up right here. That's kind of where I went long right in here as it popped up, breaking that previous candle high. But then you see on this candle, it dropped really quick. And Bren moves fast, up or down, as you'll just see in these, these candles here. I mean, these are like, that's like 50 cent moves all over the place. So it didn't move how I thought. It actually just did head fake, popped up pop right back down uh we're right on the vwap here i'm like uh cracked it once i don't want it to crack it twice i got out at 22.71 for an eight cent loss well guess what after i sold boom exploded back up 23.20 i've been like 50 cents that would have been great 40 cents whatever and it just head faked me it gave me a head fake but what can you do? Sometimes you get them right, sometimes you get them wrong. Again, with Ren, this thing moves big SDK time. Outside. So I play it real tight when I'm playing Ren, especially when I have 2,000 shares, because you can be down or up $1,000 on 2,000 shares real quick. 1105, uh, I saw Twitter hitting my high of day momentum scanner. Then I looked at the five minute chart and I see this nice little 
ascending triangle here. It's just a nice pattern, and then it broke out of it. So I played candle over candle. We're coming up towards the 20 mark. $20 mark is a big level for Twitter. For any stock, in that matter, it's a whole dollar. You're getting out of the teens and into the 20s. So I was kind of anticipating that it would get a little bit more, little momentum. I got in 11.05 a.m. at 19.88. It popped up. I just was scalping this. I didn't really think it was going to crack 20 in this move. But... I just wanted to make some money off it, so I ended up selling at 19.92, four cents, profit 80 bucks. Again, I was up huge on the day, so these $80 wins, these $100 wins, $120 wins, they all add up. I'm trying to get it back. So Dvax was watching this again. I was really looking for the 14 break. As you can see, there's a lot of resistance here. It was coming up, kind of tapped it here, tapped it again. So I'm really hoping on this next move, this next time it got up to 14 and we cracked through it and we'd see a run towards the high day again. That's kind of what I was looking for. That's what I was playing here as I played it again at 11.23 a.m. That would be inside this five-minute candle right here. So we had this nice move. Again, I'm playing candle over candle, which would actually bring us over 14 and hopefully move up. So I got in as it looked like 14 would crack. Um, I got in at 13.90. It popped up to 14 and came right back down. I could see that there's just people trying to hold this thing down. Sell, sell, sell. So I exited real quick for a one penny win, which was basically enough to cover my commissions. But I got out. And as you can see, it was a smart decision. Came all the way back down to 13.65. So I'm watching the one-minute chart. We're inside that same five-minute candle, and I'm watching that one-minute chart. And I'm like, okay, we're going to try for 14 again. So this time, I see the volume coming in at 11.24 a.m. Here it comes. You see the volume down here. It's rising, which is always a good sign, especially if it's going the direction that you want it to. So at 13.91, I get in, and uh, I get in on this candle right here at 13.92, just trying to think we'll hit 14 again we get up to 1401 same level that it's always getting rejected by and it went over 1401 as soon as 14 was looking like it was going to crack i hit the sell button sold at 1398 for seven cents six cents basically 120 dollars so here we go again i'm really wanting Dvax to crack 14 and run right so about 15 seconds later i play it again so we have this, I'm watching the one minute chart, we crack down, a little sell off, then we're coming right back up. So I buy at $13.99, anticipating again the $14 break and run, and it gets to $14.01 again, and then selling happens. This time I actually end up taking a basically two cent loss, $40, as it just came back down on me. This was, I basically held that for 10 seconds, and it just, you could look at the volume here, it's just red, it just sold, sold, sold. And that's kind of what it's just done. It's kind of gotten close to the 14 level, 1401. It's just someone sells every time. It's just like sell, 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 sell. So that's kind of where it's sitting right now. So I played DVAX again a few more times and looking for that 14 break. I won some, I lost some, but it never really broke 14 like I wanted. So I just put it aside, left it alone. So I was watching CLCD and this one was up huge today and... I, you know, a lot of people thought it would just sell off and maybe fill the gap and then come back up. But golly, this thing dipped down a, a hair and then it's just off to the races all day long. So I'm watching this thing. I mean, look at look at this these setups. You got a pop, sell off, pop, sell off, pop, sell off. So I've got the pattern there that this thing likes to go up and then sell off a little bit, but then pop back up. So I'm watching this. I see that it's hitting high day again, so that's going to attract more people to the stock. 12.36 right here. So I'm, I see the pop, sell off, and I'm waiting for candle over candle. I missed this one. This would have been a nice little win here from basically 21.38 to 21.81. So I get a, that pop and a sell off, and I'm waiting for candle over candle. Well, I missed this one. It's just like I was watching something else. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll try to scalp the next candle over candle. So here on the five-minute chart, you can see that it cracked 22. 
making high a day, and then you're gonna you're more than likely gonna have people sell off, and that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that you're gonna have a sell off, and then I wanted to play this second attempt as it went over twenty two dollars to see if it can get a move out of that. You know, at these whole dollar marks, you're gonna have people setting their stop losses. So as it cracked twenty two the first time, probably some shorts getting squeezed out, and longs as it popped up, we're gonna take their profits. And I want to play the second time it went back over 22. So as it looked like it was going to get over 22, I actually got in at 22.99. It went back up through 22. Let's find it over here on the one minute. Here it is right here. It's cracking 22. Went to 22.19. I actually sold inside this candle. I held for 10 seconds. Sold at 22.15. Basically a 15 cent win, $300. And as you can see, this stock has been just straight strong all day long. Uh, it's kind of consolidating in this area right now with a high of 2465. Uh, this was a thousand shares, so not $300, but $150. But again, I'm happy to be $504 positive on the day. Kind of sitting back. I don't want to have a red day today since I had a red day Friday. I just want to get that bad taste out of my mouth. I want to have a green day today. If I do trade anything, it's going to have to be the proper setup. Um, I'm, I'm basically watching REN, DVAX, and CLCD right now unless something pops up on the scanners that I want to play. But um, that's it. If you have any questions, guys, let me know. You can find me on Google Hangouts uh, during the trading hours at StockJock. You can also find me on StockTwits at StockJockAT. If you are interested in Benzinga, that's the news source that I use for breaking news. It's one of the best out there. They're doing a special promo for 30% off any subscription. They have monthly, monthly, they have monthly, quarterly, yearly subscription plans. Having a news source is absolute is absolutely key to day trading. I mean, breaking news happens all the time, and if you can get in before the news gets out to everybody out there, you're going to make some money. And I have an annual subscription to Benzinga myself. I highly recommend it. But if you use Stock Jock as the coupon code, all one word, Stock Jock, uh, you'll get 30% off any subscription at Benz Benzinga. Also, if you don't have a chat room that you're a member of, I highly recommend it. Jason Bond Picks is one of the chat rooms I subscribe to. They are great for new traders. Their video lessons are the best that I've seen out there. It really gives you a handle on how to trade. Swing trade, day trade. If you don't know all the lingo, they even go over the lingo. It's a really good resource and it's 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 a great it's a great education. It's a schooling to be a trader. Uh, if you want to do trading full time, you can't just think you're going to put some money in an account and start playing. It doesn't work that way. You have to educate yourself. Some crazy statistic that says 90% of all day traders or traders in general fail and lose their money. It's only 10% of us that are profitable. It's mostly because people get anxious. They want to they want to trade right away. They have no idea what they're doing. They throw their money around and they end up losing it. So I highly recommend joining a chat room. A link is down in the description of the one I use. Try them out. I think they have a quarterly plan right now. It's basically just over $100 a month if you go with the quarterly plan. You could get, there's like over 80 or something like that video lessons. And you could watch them all within that quarter. And, you know, cancel it after that if you don't like it. They do swing trade alerts. They do swing trade alerts. They do day trade alerts. It's just a really good tool to have in your bag as you're trading. All right, guys, so you saw the end of the video that I just did. There's a little bonus content. As you can see, right now I'm up 16.27 on the day. This is why you need a new service. I just talked about Benzinga. That's one of the, I actually have two, but Benzinga is usually the most consistent for me, and that's why I pumped that one. But I have two, and over the new service, I heard CDTI, 13G filed out. So-and-so has 52% of the company. This is a 3 million share float stock. This thing just I, has a habit of exploding and, and shooting like a rocket ship up when it does. So I heard that news right over here. News came out. Volume was starting to come in. 
I got in at 437 right here. This is a one minute chart. As soon as I got in, it halted because of a circuit breaker. So five minute halt, right? Waited, waited, waited. As soon as it opened up, boom, 494. It started just going like this, up and down, whatever. I didn't care. I sold 476, 2000. Actually, I had 2,928 shares at that time. And I just, I killed it. That made my day super, super green. Almost made it up for my loss of Friday. I'm definitely green on the month of September. This is definitely on watch for a gap play. This is this is just looking great overall. I will be watching for the five minute candle over candle over here. That's really what I'm watching right now. Let it pull back, let the sellers sell, and I'll wait for buyers to come back in. But this is why you need a new service. Right here, this win, uh, what is it, 39 cents on basically 3,000 shares, $900. That pays for basically mm, a year and a quarter of the new service that I use. Right there, one trade, done. And this has been happening all year long. This is why you have to have a new service. I heard it in my ear, went over to the stock, bought right then, got in. Sure enough, that joker just ran. And it, it went as high as 521, but I just wanted to win. And as you can see, it's... It's at 579. It's still higher than what I sold it at basically 20 minutes ago. So just now it's selling off. So anyway, just a little bonus clip. That's why you need a new service, folks. Benzinga, that's one of them. Link down in the description. 30% off if you use the coupon code STOCKJOCK at checkout. All right.